vinyl community, Beach Boys fans, random people on the internet. My name is Giggins, and we're here today to talk about the Beach Boys Deluxe Set. Yeah, this is kind of a weird one. Um, long story short, I was in an antique store recently and saw this sitting from afar. And uh, our eyes met, and it was just love at first sight. Um, this was sitting on a shelf. And I've been collecting Beach Boys records since I was a little kid. And I've never even heard of this thing. Never seen it, never heard of it, completely new to me. So I walked over to it and I was like, all right, it looks, it looks real. You know, Capitol Records, all this, the whole packaging. Um, and I started talking to a guy who was working at this booth and he told me a little bit about it. And then I did my own research and discovered that there isn't a whole lot to know about it beyond some facts. Um, so again, what the whole reason I do this channel, I wanted to make a video about something cool and unique and put it out there so it's a reference to be used. Um, so this isn't really a review of the music, this is a review of the product itself. Um, this is the Beach Boys Deluxe Set. It came out in 1967 um, in a couple of different versions. This is the Duophonic version. Now, for those of you who don't know Duophonic, Duophonic is fake stereo. It's when they take two mono channels and then like shadow them or mirror them so you get like just a hair off from each other and it creates like uh, a shadowing effect and a lot of the times it sounds like crap but sometimes it sounds okay. In this instance, not the best. Um, and then the other version was in mono. So this box set, this is in stereo. The, the box itself is kind of beat up. Um, the original binding of this is in red. Someone taped it over the years, just put a big piece of red tape on it, and I really want to take it off, but I don't want to destroy the box itself. The mono box set came with a black border, and the mono box set is also very unique because basically Capital took remainder stock mm -hmm. of their of their LP their LPs. Um, this is Pet Sounds, Summer Days, and Beach Boys Today. They took leftover copies of the mono editions of those albums with the original sleeves, put them in a box, sent it out. They were like, all right, that clears out some space in the vaults. For the stereo one, they actually printed up uh, new LPs with special labels that say Beach Boys Deluxe Set, um, which I think is pretty cool. So let's see if you can see that. So it says Beach Boys Deluxe Set, side one, and it goes up to side six because there's three albums in here. Um, I think that's pretty cool. What a unique thing. Um, just for the fun factor of it, it's it's kind of nice. For the weird factor of it, the fact that it exists is mind-blowing. In 1967, Capital couldn't give the Beach Boys product away. I mean, they had the hardest damn time selling their albums at this point because Capital did not understand that the Beach Boys did not want to be a surf group for the rest of their lives. And for some reason, no one in their thick skull can get past that notion. Um, the back of this box set, reading the liner notes on this thing, you want to roll your eyes and vomit because it is terrible. The whole point of the band, after 1964, after All Summer Long came out, was to drop the whole summer vibe thing, drop the cars, drop the surfing, Let's write good pop songs about falling in love and growing up. And that was their point for a while. And here we are, 1967, with a box set of albums that have nothing to do with surfing, nothing to do with hot rods. The entire back is disgustingly riddled with hot rod and surf crap. Yes, they did basically invent that genre. Yes, it was popular. Yes, Capital made a lot of money off them. But that wasn't the case forever. Let me let me let me read you. Let me let's do a fireside chat here for a second. What a long lasting splash they've made! What wild bashes their sounds seem to generate! And no wonder! After each of those sentences, they add more and more exclamation points, as if to yell at you louder that they made good music. When a group of inventive guys have been universally credited with molding and popularizing two major popular styles like surfing and hot rock music. It goes without saying that they've got more than a little something going for them. Uh, and then it goes down to say more about surf and more about cars and more about some other crap that has nothing to do with these albums. Um, 
it's embarrassing, is what it is. But the you know the albums themselves are obviously fantastic. It start it goes backwards chronologically, so it starts off with Pet Sounds, which is a laugh because Pet you know Capital was like, I don't know if this thing's gonna sell or not. This might not be a good choice. But they put Pet Sounds, Summer Days and Summer Nights, and then Beach Boys Today, and um, even Beach Boys Today they were weary about because there wasn't a whole lot of like big crazy pop songs on here. So that's why Summer Days and Summer Nights happened, which it had like. California Girls, Help Me, Rhonda. I mean, it was a big album for them. Whew, let me take a breath. The, the fact... Capital spent their time putting together a box set of the Beach Boys when they knew that, like, Smiley Smile and Wild Honey were out, and they were like, uh, we can't sell anything. What are we gonna do? Put out a box set. That makes sense. Yeah, let's put out albums that people already bought and already enjoyed. Um... Let's not promote their new stuff. Let's not give them the time that they need to finish Smile. Let's not do any of that. Here's Best of the Beach Boys, Volume 200. It's like, who was working that day that thought, I have an idea. Beach Boys box set. Yes, that will sell just fine. Um, hey, also, if we put out mono, we can get rid of the stuff hanging out in the back room. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. The mono editions, um, yeah, like I said, are a remainder stock of the actual albums. So the labels are the original labels that say Beach Boys Today, Summer Days, Pet Sounds, with their original numbers. Like I said, this one is the um, Beach Boys Deluxe on each label, sides one through six. So there's rumors that there's a Capitol Records Club edition with a blue side. I've seen no proof. Um, Reading about it on the internet, people are like, yeah, it exists. No, it doesn't exist. So just throwing that out there to add onto this video for historical purposes in case it ever does come up. Uh, that might be an option, but also might not be. The mono copies are apparently pretty rare to come across. Because um, by that time, mono wasn't selling as much as stereo was. And uh, even a year later, mono pretty, basically got phased out. And it was stereo only after that. So... That's harder to find, and apparently they come in the original inner sleeves, so it'll probably, you know, have all like the stuff for other albums on it, which is pretty cool. Not sure what the original sleeves were like for this one. Guessing they were white, these sleeves are new. Not sure. Um, so the back of the box looks like, so you can see it. Uh, and the picture in the front is cool, because it's definitely them from the summer of 67. Um, and it's got like these lines, as if like music notes were supposed to be on it. But yeah, the Beach Boys Deluxe set more than 30 of their greatest hits. Uh, historically, and for collectability, I think it's pretty cool. Um, sometimes they can go for a lot of money. This one, the box is kind of beat up, so it wasn't that expensive. Um, but for being a Beach Boys fan, as long as I've had, over over 20 years now, um, this definitely caught me by surprise, and I really like having it just for the cool factor of it. Again, not much to talk about here. The albums themselves speak for themselves. It's fantastic music. It's some of the best recorded music of our time. And um, unfortunately, being duophonic doesn't sound the best. I guess the mono ones sound pretty good because it's just the standard mono stock that they sold. But yeah, so that's basically this whole video. Um, just wanted to show this off and talk about it. And let me know if you guys have this. Have you seen one? Do you own it? Have you played it? Do you like it? Do you think it sounds like crap? Um, do you have the mono one? You know, let's let's see what they look like. Let's open them up and show them to the people of the YouTube. And, um, you know, put this out there for historical purposes. So, that's kind of all I got on this one. Just a really short video just talking about this cool thing that I never knew existed until very recently. Did research, found out there's basically nothing to know. Um, you know, I guess a handful of other groups on the Capitol label also had this treatment around that time. So... You know, the Beach Boys being one of the biggest sellers they had, it, it's kind of a no-brainer, I guess, that this was going to happen for them. Because um, Capital loved putting together Greatest Hits albums for them and putting them out. So why not just resell the albums people already bought? Um, pretty cool. 10 out of 10. What the hell? The Beach Boys Deluxe Box Set, 1967. Uh, if you find a copy, pick it up. I guess it's rare. I mean... I've been buying Beach Boys records, like I said, since I was a little kid. I've never come across this thing, so let me know. That's it. Beach Boys Deluxe. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Giggins. This has been Album Reviews with the Beach Boys. Thanks, guys.